Go Speed Racer! <laughs> <laughs> also, Wacky Racers, anyone? Mm-hmm. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Wacky Racers! I mean, My Little Pony, French Biz Magic. Season 6, Episode 14, The Cart Before the Ponies. Yep, there's been several comparisons so far. Uh, I came up with the Speed Racer one, and then there was the Wacky Racers one, which is pretty um, referenced well in this episode, and then people going Mario Kart. I'm like, eh, not so much. A tiny bit with Rarity's lovely blocking tactic. <laughs> that was more Wacky Racers, specifically that evil guy. I can't remember his name right now. But he had the dog that would go... <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't watch Wacky Racers a whole lot. It's a bit less Speed Racer because... We didn't really have any honorable main characters. <laughs> uh, All three grown-ups were being idiot jerks. I mostly brought up Speed Racer because I decided to sketch out all three cards and all three of the CMC, which means you're getting sketches now, not full drawings, because I was like, I don't have time for this, but hey, I can do sketches for all of them. So I did, and one of them for Apple Bloom because she had the fastest card at the end, was Speed Racer, because I was like, oh, that's a neat pose, I'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, his classic, that one kind of mid-air, slightly awkward, like he's just jumping out of his car. Mm -hmm. But now on to the actual episode. This is one of those episodes where I predicted exactly what was going to happen, but still enjoyed it. <laughs> because I was enjoying, like, okay, so they're going to do this now, right? Yep, they did that. <laughs> like, I predicted dead on what was going to happen. I was like, at first I was like, Okay, we're either going to go with the standard where obviously we're going to go with Sweetie Belle's going to do the pretty cart, then we're going to do the classic cart with Apple Bloom and this, or we're going to mix things up with Apple Bloom doing the fast cart, Scootaloo doing the wacky cart, and Sweetie Belle doing the classic cart, which is exactly what they went with. <laughs> mm hmm Because it was too predictable for them to go to the categories that, you know, air quotes fit them. And I also went, you know, we're going to have a problem here. Either they're going to go along with their plans, they're going to come out terrible, or the older siblings are going to completely take over things. I'm going to bet more on the older siblings taking over things. Well, especially with the name of the episode, I know it's a play on the phrase putting the cart before the horse, but the older ponies were literally putting the cart before the other ponies, prioritizing what they wanted over accepting any input from the person who's actually having the race. Mm hmm Though I gotta say, even though it's not a good reason, I gotta say Rarity has the most valid reason out of the other ones, really. Because she was like, REVENGE ON DERPY! Or Muffins, as they call her in the show now. Mm hmm Well, I thought Applejack had the best reason, upholding a family tradition. I didn't say best reason, I said most realistic. <laughs> oh, I have obviously zoned out. Amber has <laughs> left the conversation. <laughs> But yes, like, apples are always traditional, so we must do traditional. And really, Rainbow Dash just wanted to relive her glory days. <laughs> but she's also Pretty Wonderbolt, much. so she's kind of living her glory days now, so... <laughs> mm -hmm. And I love how a lot of people are like, who builds a racetrack like that? <laughs> I'm like, that particular type of racetrack is really only there for the classic crash. Because <laughs> I can't think of a racetrack that crosses like that in the center, at least that way. In particular, where three racers can crash into each other in that particular way. Yeah, wouldn't really be a good design. And, you know, the episode really set us up for, yeah, think about who you're going to pick. Because Charlie gave them that warning of, be careful who you ask for help. Because not only are they going to help you, but they have to ride with you. So, at that point, I was wondering if Apple Bloom would ask Big Mac instead. <laughs> You know, and since Big Mac's so much heftier than Applejack. Mm -hmm. Well, realistically, if you would have picked Big Mac, you would, have, you would have designed the cart around him so he was more forward in the cart and um, laying down. And you would have been behind him steering because he would have been the weight. And if he was laying down, he'd be more aerodynamic because he would be hidden by the cart. Mm -hmm. But we know how well the last thing with Apple Bloom and Big Mac and a competition went. Mm -hmm. uh, I do declare. <laughs> You want an eclair? No, I declare. <laughs> oh, I still feel sorry for that older pony. <laughs> mm -hmm. and that suddenly reminds me of a new webcomic I'm reading. <laughs> Focus Lux. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, but yeah, I was like, I can see how this ends. So either 
it's going to be a complete disaster, or something, or a disaster is going to happen, but then they'll end up with the cards they actually want because of something. So it's kind of a combination of those two, really. Well, I kept wondering how far the CMC would get pushed before they would break down and yell at the older sisters. Because, you know, at first they were really excited, and then they were less excited, but trusted them because they had more experience. And then we finally get to the race and we're not even driving. It's like, I pretty much would have stopped right then and go, uh, no, I'm not even getting on the cart. See, I don't care if I lose because this is even my race. Because so far I've had absolutely zero fun, so why am I doing this? Oh, I do find it kind of interesting that we still got them to redo the race because wouldn't that mean everyone has to rebuild their rides and you couldn't really count the second race because even if they rebuilt their rides, it wouldn't be the same as the first ride they built, so... And how quickly did everyone manage to rebuild these or were some of the carts not totally wrecked in the accident? And they just had the repair of them, which still brings up the issue of, is this still fair? <laughs> uh, I'd like to go back to when I actually predicted things. I actually started predicting it the moment the medals were revealed. I was like, oh, yeah. there's three medals. Each one's for a different thing. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. so I like how Shirley opened with, you know, this stuff about physics. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I love how everyone's reactions of like, oh, then one point, oh, we're not doing uh, actual schoolwork, and then, oh, we're doing schoolwork. <laughs> My only thing there is if the Derby's an annual tradition and it has ties back to Sweet Apple Acres, why is any pony in the class surprised that they're going to be competing in the Derby the next day? Wouldn't it normally be held on the same day every year, barring weather issues, which you usually don't have with Pegasi Pony to control the weather? And Apple Bloom's comment about finally being old enough to participate. So you knew what age you had to be and you just happened to be that age. And that's why we've never seen it before. The main six were too old and the Cutie Mark Crusaders were too young. So the majority of the cast members that we focus on were the wrong age to participate in the event. So I would have liked it background mentioned at some point because we do interact with Applejack a lot and the uh, um, people at the farm. So couldn't we have had someone at some point in the background at, at least this season go, oh yeah, I can't do that because I have to prepare for this or, you know, stuff like that. It would have been nice to have like a little bit of foreshadowing for this event. It would have been, especially since who builds and designs a cart that quickly yeah i was just gonna say like the next day i know we're doing it for like story reasons but realistically you would want to give people a month for this <laughs> yeah months to draw up their designs to actually do the building not to have to do everything in one single day not everybody's a freaking unicorn we need time yeah especially for safety reasons <laughs> mm -hmm. though nice touch that everyone had helmets and seat belts so, any particular nitpicks that we haven't gone over yet? <laughs> well, the dual-sided lesson at the end, the combination speak up for yourself slash don't trust others just because they're older than you and the listen to other people. Mm. Because all three of the CMC actually said things to their respective sister figure ponies about how they wanted their carts done and also tried to make changes to the cart that the older ponies would then turn around and remove paint over etc applejack was really the worst about this which falls back into the trope of applejack being stubborn as any living creature could possibly be because apple bloom comes right out and says i want to do something else and applejack comes back with we're apples, we do traditional. So are you an apple or you're, are you an apple? She flat out shuts Apple Bloom down and says, you don't get a choice. You are a member of the Apple family. You will do the race this way. So how was she not aware that she's not listening when she flat out shut Apple Bloom down? Also, I just realized that this episode also shows a little bit of Rarity's growth, not just in the lesson, in the fact at the end that she's dressed in overalls and she's covered in grease. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of growth, and even though they're, oh, now what do we do? 
was to sit back and relax. It was sit back and relax and watch the race, not sit back and relax at the spa and get this grease off of me, my god. So please continue if you had more. You kind of got me midline, so I think I lost it. Ah, sorry. Oh, that's what it was. Apple Bloom was the most outspoken. The other two were more in the realm of strongly hinting. You know, how Sweetie Belle kept saying, you know, I really like this, you know, old-timey design, and yeah, I really like this yellow fringe. You know, but Rare was so focused on the category that she wanted to win that she was oblivious to the fact of, I want to design a cart like this. Because Rarity's answer was, that type of cart won't win this category. When Sweetie Belle's been trying to say, but I want to win the other category. And Rainbow Dash is so ridiculously competitive and speed focused that if it doesn't have to do with speed, it doesn't matter. Though if you really think about it, if Rarity could have gotten on with the category, though she did at the end, um, she'd also she's also a good fit for uh, the classic category as well. Well, yes, because, I mean, she was putting off classic as passe, but there's also such a thing as retro and also such a thing as doing period pieces. And even bringing back old styles and making them slightly more modern. Yes, because if you look at all the other cards, nobody else was going for the traditional category. Whoever did traditional was going to get a win. <laughs> uh, good point there. I didn't even think about that. There were several ones that were slightly wacky and a couple of speed focused ones. Yeah, there was nothing but that one cart in both instances. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, a couple of technical things. Um, the voice acting was nice. I especially liked certain parts where the voice actors are allowed to, not just the fact that the girls themselves are changing age, but they're actually allowing them that age change to come through in the voice acting. Like there were several times where Apple Bloom was a little bit deeper than she normally is, especially when she's being uh, slightly more adult and trying to lead the others. Her voice tone changes a little bit lower. So that's a nice little touch there. I also like that we're now kind of vaguely mentioning their ages and that they're growing older and not just, oh, I got my cutie mark, so I'm older now, but they're actually going, yeah, it's, it, I'm aging kind of stuff. So that's good. Because mm -hmm. there's a tendency, especially in cartoons, for everyone to stay the same age forever and ever and ever. Cough, Ash, catch him, cough. Yes, unless there's some sort of magical MacGuffin that suddenly ages them up quickly. Thundercats cough, Thundercats. <laughs> Or it's temporarily done for the sake of a plot of a single episode. Ah, uh, Trixie invades Ponyville. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was a pretty nice episode. It was enjoyable. Nothing really too bad about it. Just an overall, uh, I don't mean this as an insult, but overall okay episode. Of course, that's like saying an episode of Avatar Last Airbender was okay because, you know, it's okay for Avatar, but compared that okay episode to other shows... <laughs> I mean, despite being predictable, it was mostly enjoyable. So, uh, shall I wrap things up? Mm hmm Uh, overall, I really liked the episode. Really nice thing. The lessons were good. The cart designs were fun. The second cart designs were fun. Seeing Derpy in the episode, and apparently she has a son now. That's good to know, because everyone was thinking she had a daughter named Dinky. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the fandom. They still like him, though. I have no idea what they're naming him now, but hey. Ah, but an enjoyable episode overall, and uh, can't wait for next week's. Yeah, oh, enjoyable episode. Nice to have something that's another more slice of life. You know, they're not all big, huge about saving Equestria or solving Table Tree Castle Map friendship problems. Because, you know, we had one of those just a couple of episodes again. Also, we didn't touch on the fact that uh, we had a song again. It feels like a long time oh, yeah. since we've had a song, but it's really only been a couple episodes because we had one in Spice Up Your Life, and that was technically only like two episodes ago. Mm, I forgot to mention that. I, re I actually like that song because it worked well with everything, and it flowed well, too. Yeah, it fit well. It flowed well. It wasn't overly long, which... Sometimes they seem to drag on too much. So is that everything? Mm -hmm. Oh, those are gone. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, I hope you enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic. Season 6, Episode 14, The Cart Before the Ponies. 
Thanks for watching. What's one more channel on your account? Please subscribe. If you enjoy Lux's art, you can find more on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Really like Lux's art? You can check out his Patreon and see the link below for commission availability.